Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we have Rachel Blauert, a senior film major and a captain of the women's golf team. For you as an athlete, a lot of things have changed, but let's begin with what brought you to Huntington University. Back in high school, my junior year, I made the decision. I was like, I want to play college golf. One of my coaches in high school really agreed with me, so I got on a website and I wasn't looking anywhere into Indiana and the golf coach at the time, he reached out to me and asked me to come to HU. The minute I set foot on campus in October of 2015, I fell in love right from the get-go of stepping out of the pickup truck with my parents. Just that first step was amazing and I knew Huntington was where I was supposed to be. Yeah, I think we all can kind of relate to feeling that way when we first visit. Absolutely. I, I mean, yeah, I definitely did. So how has your HU journey been so far? It's definitely been an interesting one. Started as a broadcast major and then switched my second semester freshman year to film. Couldn't be happier about that decision. Film has been able to really brighten up my world to storytelling and finding and actually embracing the passions that I would never really allowed myself to embrace growing up. And then I play golf, but along with getting to play golf, I've had about every injury under the sun that you could possibly have. So it's been really kind of a rocky road there. But I have an amazing coach who has allowed me to compete and learn the game and grow in my competitiveness so much. So just being at HU, it's had its ups and downs like any place would. I mean, no place is perfect, but overall, like I've really grown just from being here and getting to be out on the golf course or getting to sit in class with my friends and my professors. I've learned so much. Nice, yeah. So let's kind of get into the uh, nitty gritty here. Um, <laughs> how has your senior experience changed because of COVID-19, starting with your golf season? Ooh, really getting into the nitty gritty there. <laughs> um, so the whole COVID-19 thing, at first, I think, like anybody out there, kind of thought it was a little bit of a joke. Mm -hmm. um, kind of thought everything was being blown out of proportion. I wasn't taking it super seriously. When my friends and my teammates and I would talk about it, it was one of those things where we were like, eh, just wash your hands, it's fine. Yeah. But within a matter of a week, that quickly changed. Um, we, like, we started indoor practices in February, like the end of February. And all of us were loving those, and we were so excited. And then we got to have our first outdoor practice the, like, first weekend of March. We were so excited. Just such an amazing time. But there was this, like, dark cloud. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because all of us could just, we could feel it. And we could just sense, like, oh, no, it's coming. Like, this is bad news, bears. It's just, it's coming. Yeah. And... So our coach was trying to, like, help lighten the mood, keep things easy, keep things breezy kind of thing. Like, it's all going to be fine. It's all going to be fine. And then we got the message that the NCAA had shut down all spring competition. Yeah. And we knew, like, I think that was probably the worst round of golf I've ever played in my life. Not score-wise or anything like that, but just there was so much pain in playing it. We had yeah. our entire team played together. All of us girls played together. I was the only senior there because our other senior wasn't there, and all, all the other classmen were just like, it's going to be okay, like, your senior season isn't over, like, we're going to have a spring season, like, all this stuff, and we finished that round, and I got a call from my coach, and he's like, it's going to be okay, like, they're going to talk about it, they're not going to cancel it, like, there's no way, and we had a team meeting right before spring break, and our coach sat down with all of us, and he was like, all right, what's our plan moving forward? Like, what's the action moving forward? Myself and the other senior and my co-captain had decided, like, if they shut down sp spring sports, but Huntington lets us, like, we still want to practice. You know, we still want to play. We still want to go out, enjoy ourselves, be able to do it. Within a week, that wasn't even an option. Just, I remember the Monday I got the phone call from my coach. It was, like, 10 in the morning, I had just been on the phone with my mom, and he called me, and the week prior to that, from the beginning of spring break till then, me and him had been going back and forth with phone calls, and every time I answered, I was like, okay, please tell me you have good news. Please tell me you have good news, and he's like, not yet. 
nope, it's not good news. And when I answered this one, I was like, I'm guessing this isn't the news I want to hear. And he was like, nope, it's, it's over. And I don't think I said anything for like a minute and a half on the phone. Like, I think my coach literally thought I ended the phone call. Um, yeah. But it was one of the hardest things I've ever heard. Because I know there's not a lot of athletes at HU who've had maybe a conference experience or anything like that, but they might be an underclassman you get to. But there is a few of us who have never competed at conference. And myself and one of my really good friends, who is also a senior, are two of those athletes. We've never competed at conference. So we now don't get that experience of getting to go play a conference tournament for our school. Um, that hurt a lot. It was one of those, and I told my coach this, is it It wasn't that I didn't get to go pe- compete for the school. Because I want to do that, and I love competing for Huntington University. It's been one of the biggest blessings in my life for the past three and a half years. What hurt more was the fact that I wasn't going to get to play one more tournament with my teammates. I wasn't going to get one more bus ride down to uh, Tennessee or Alabama or Kentucky or down to southern Indiana or even just to Indy to go play a tournament. We weren't going to get another stay in a hotel where we stay up talking about the course and then laughing and playing euchre in the hotel lobby. It was those things that we weren't going to get to get like I wasn't going to get anymore that have made this team my family here. And that hurt so much on top of yeah. my family wouldn't even get to see me play again at the collegiate level. Like that was a huge blow. Like the last tournament I played in the fall, my parents didn't even get to see me play. So it hurts a lot. Yeah. yeah. You want to take a minute? We can take a minute. No, it's okay. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> it's, we're good. <laughs> I, I've had a, a, quite a few weeks to work through it, um, but it's it's hard, you know? It's... Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, I know, I mean, being a sophomore, I still have a bit more to look forward to, but it's just, like, still, it's tough just mm-hmm. moving to an online thing, which is one of our next questions. <laughs> hey. <laughs> How about in the digital media arts department, like, how has the virus impacted your involvement with the the department? Because I know you, you were an editor, you were the lead editor on the film we were planning on working on, and Mm -hmm. then I think you were also a TA for Practicum, right? Yes. So just how, how has the whole virus, like, impacted those It's been interesting. Um, Going online was not something I looked forward to in the beginning, just because I am a very, I like to be with people. I'm very extroverted. Kind of comes from the nickname Smiley, but um, not being able to do that's hard. I was supposed to be lead editor. You were supposed to be my assistant editor on Jess Chanaki's film, Second Chances, and I can't do that. Uh, I can't, my, like, computer can't handle the footage size, um, which stinks. Like, I was so excited, because I have always been a producer for the past three and a half years, have always been, that's what I've been known as, and every once in a while I get to dip my hands in the editing, um, but finally I was going to be able to, like, edit something, and I was so excited, especially because her story is, like, super incredible, and just so beautiful, and my computer can't handle that, so unfortunately I don't get to, which stinks. I'm glad she is still getting it edited, Um, it is still getting made, it is still getting put together, that's pretty awesome, so I'm really excited for her. As for TAing practicum, still get to do that, which is really nice, we've met a couple times, so just getting to see all the underclassmen especially when we talk about the films and, like, what is going to happen in the next semester for them. 
it's really exciting just to see that light in their eyes because it's the same light that I remember seeing in myself and my classmates' eyes when we were freshmen and going to be sophomores and then when we were sophomores. It was that like, we're going to make these projects. We're going to tell these stories. It doesn't matter if we have a thousand dollar budget or if we have five bucks in our pocket that we're going to pull out. It's this beautiful light in their eyes to see that they still want to create the stories that they were going to create right after spring break. Um, so right now we are in the works um, to still create those films just happening in the fall. Um, I'm so glad, especially when we've all talked about it in the class, every single one of them still wants to do it. And all of them have upperclassmen on their crews who have stepped forward and they said, yeah, I'm still part of it. I'm still down to be a part of it. So getting to see that even though like the DMA crew isn't all together and we don't get to be one big happy family on campus, we can still be one big happy family virtually. Um, and still like looking out for each other. We still want to make films and tell stories and put the work into pre-production now so that when they get to the fall, it's ready to go. It's literally just sign a couple papers, grab the cameras, grab the audio equipment, and you're out the door filming. Um, so that's been really awesome to still get to see that light. Just sticks that I won't get to be there on set when they were all made like I was hoping. But mm -hmm. I know I'll hear about it, and that's what matters ten times more. It's just getting to hear the light and see the passion in them growing still. Yeah. So you, you kind of talked about this a little earlier, but could you go in depth a little bit more of like what you personally think about ending your senior year of classes, like doing it all online? It's definitely not something I'm s super excited about. So having it where I don't get to be in the same physical space as everyone else is very hard. But I know the college is doing the best they can. It's one of those... I've gone back and forth about it with my friends and with my family and with my coaches and my teammates about this is so hard. Because at the very beginning when COVID-19 came out, all of us were like, it's kind of a joke. Like I mentioned earlier, it's kind of a joke. None of us were really serious about it. And now it's you practically have to watch the news hour by hour for an update to see yeah. is the stay-at-home order going to stay in place longer? What is the next step? Are we not allowed to leave our homes at all? Are we only allowed to leave our homes for certain things? Like, so much has changed. And I will admit there was a little bit of frustration at the very beginning of spring break with the wanting to know what the college was going to do and yeah. wanting to know what steps were they going to take to make sure we were safe and make sure that we were still getting the best possible education we could get, especially for the people who have very hands-on majors like DMA, nursing, athletic, like physical science classes, things like that, that really like theater classes that mm -hmm. need to really meet in person, need to see each other, need to be able to touch equipment and handle equipment. And hearing that everything is now online and like we can't even be on campus, that was hard. Because I was, I stayed on campus over spring break. I didn't go home. I had anticipated like, all right, if they go all online, I'm staying here because at least Becker Hall is going to be open so I can stay, I can edit like, yeah. I can still be here. And then everything went online. No Becker Hall. And within a matter of four hours, I had my entire car packed. I mean, yeah. like, I had been anticipating and, like, slowly packing. And my parents had been mentioning, maybe you should start packing. Maybe start loading things into your car slowly. See what you can get all packed in your car. Hmm. And... Once that email came out, my car was 70% packed. Yeah. And within two days, I helped 
a couple of friends finish packing up their car and cleaning their room and packing their room. And Monday morning on the 23rd, I got in my car at 3 a.m., went to say a final goodbye to the friends I had helped fill up their car, said goodbye to the two friends who stayed to send us off, and at 4.30 that morning, we drove away from each other at the stoplight and waved goodbye. And that's probably one of the hardest things in the world to do because I don't know when I'm going to see any of my friends again. But the college is trying their best. Like, I know they are. And I think that's really hard to see right now. Yeah. And that's something that, like, every single time we get a new email from Huntington, it's like, okay, this is going to hurt really bad. But we need to find the silver lining. We need to understand they are trying their hardest to do the best they can for us. And it's... It hasn't been easier for me to look at it that way. I had a ten and a half hour car ride back home to figure out how to look at it that way. Yeah. Um, but it's one of those, every time I see an email come through, like we got an email about when graduation is now, and every time I see one of those come through, it's like, okay, this is hard. This hurts. I'm not finishing my senior year on the campus that I called home for the past three and a half years. I'm not getting to see my friends every day. I'm not getting to spend time with my teammates or sit down at lunch with my coach and laugh about my very strong addiction to coffee and caffeine (laughs) (laughs) or get to come into the film practicum class with a very large coffee and way too much energy. (laughs) But... I'm still getting to see those people. I'm just seeing them on a screen, which mm-hmm. isn't the same Yeah. at all. And that's been the hardest thing to accept, but that's the way it is now. And we yeah. don't know how long that's going to be. And I know HU is going to do their best to make sure that when they everyone else comes back in the fall, what has happened this past semester is not a dark cloud or a black smudge on a piece of paper, but there is going to be like a bright light to it. I can tell that they're trying to do that and they want it to be that way. And I'm just, I'm praying for all of them because I know the position that Emberton must be in and Dr. Coffey must be in and all of them and uh, Dr. Jaworski. It's not an easy position because they can't have students coming into their office and saying, hey, this is how we feel. And right now they don't have any students there to even brighten up the campus. Yeah. So it's hard. And it hurts. This is my senior year and I don't get to finish it there. But I know everyone else does. And that's what I'm hoping for more. And I want everyone else to get the joy and the beauty and the love out of HU that it's given to me. And just really embrace all those times that they do get to be there. Very well said. (laughs) Have my moments every once in a while. (laughs) (laughs) So you mentioned um, Huntington uh, giving updates on graduation. I believe they said it was pushed back to August, right? That is correct. August 15th is the new graduation date. Yes. Do you plan on coming back for that? I actually do not plan on coming back for graduation. Um, Okay. I wish I could. It's one of those I've gone back and forth thinking about it and praying about it a lot because it is literally, so I have a job post-graduation. Thankfully, I'm really lucky there Um, and I'm hoping all the seniors will be as lucky. Um, Mm -hmm. But I do have a job and I will be in the middle of some pretty heavy work in my job um, in August. So I was going back and forth. I really can't swing it. I really wish I could. But I do know, like, I will be back at HU in September for a week. So I went back and forth trying to balance out and trying to figure out, should I try and catch a red-eye flight to go to graduation to only be there for, like, literally for graduation, walk across the stage, and then get on a plane right after? 
and that's just not the experience I want. Yeah, definitely. Um, ex like the big thing is, is like my family. The only people who could be there in if we would have had it in May was like my parents and my brother. Like a large portion of my family couldn't come. So, mm -hmm. with not going to graduation in August, I can still do a celebration with my family at home. Like all of my family. Um, yeah. and that's, we were all talking about that, like, the diploma's getting sent to my parents' house anyways, yeah. so, like, they'll have it before I'll even see it, so they said they're gonna, whole, like, plan a whole little thing for our family, which, we're still gonna do something, it's just not gonna be at a used campus, so, it's okay. Yeah. So, you, you said you had, um, you had work, like, post-graduation. Um, was that, was that originally your plan? Like, so if this all didn't happen or whatever, like, was that still your plan to begin with? To still that, have a job after graduation? Yeah, that, the job that you have lined up right now. Yes, uh, so I'll actually be working for the Minnesota Golf Association starting Ooh. in the middle, end of May. Couldn't be more excited about it. Um, I've wanted to work with them for the past three and a half years, so I'm finally getting work with them after three and a half years. That's awesome. Um, but it has always been in the plans to work with them. Like, I had already committed to working with them back in January. Uh, nice. So when this th whole thing rolled around, like, I was on the phone with my mom, and she's like, you should probably message your boss. See how everything's doing with them right now. And thankfully, he called me. He's like, yeah, so we're, like, still planning everything. Like, we're still in the motions to keep everything going. Like, oh, yeah, and you're still working with us. Like, you're good. I was like, okay. So I can breathe there. Um, yeah. So I lucked out there um, in still being able to work, which I'm so excited to do. Um, but, yeah, lucky I still have the opportunity and – the pleasure to have a job post graduation, and I'm hoping all the other seniors are able to get ones as well. To to end things off here, um, do you just want to reflect on some of your favorite memories you've made <laughs> at Huntington? There's been a lot. Uh, I would say favorite. I'll start with favorite golf memory. Yeah. Would be my senior year in the fall. We had our final tournament down in southern Indiana for the fall at this, like, very, very, very gorgeous course, very prestigious course. And the entire experience, it was like a three-and-a-half, four-hour van ride down there on top of staying in a hotel room for, like, I think it was, like, three days, two or three days. And it was so much fun. It was just all of us were laughing. We were joking around. It was both the girls and the guys teams. And, like, us girls, we were giving the guys a bunch of crud because of, like, their smelly shoes. <laughs> and they were giving us a bunch of crud because all of us had, like, pillow pets and blankets. <laughs> uh, but just getting to have that experience, especially because, like, it downpoured on the second day. So, like, we couldn't even finish the second day. <laughs> yeah. So it was just, like... We really enjoyed the entire experience. At least I did. I thought it was awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, favorite film memory was by far probably Four Stages of Love, um, which is myself and Sam Krager's senior film. Our after party for finishing filming was at Hall's Diner that we had used for location. And by far, that was the most hilarious experience I've ever had for film. Because, like, all of the film sets I've been on have been absolutely amazing. I mean, I got to be on Redshift as a freshman. That was the very first film set I was ever on. Oh, lucky you. Oh, I man. know. I was so excited. I went from being a grip to being a second AD. It was awesome. <laughs> so thankful for Ben Crane and Josh Bellis for like giving me that opportunity. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have found the producing as fast. 
But mm-hmm. from going to, like, redshift to being on the concourse and the pitch to doing system air with Mary DeVore and getting to walk on stage with Mary DeVore for that win was incredible. But then Sam and I had spent literally over a year writing four stages of love and just sitting there at that crew party at the end at Hall's Diner. I don't think I've ever felt so much love for so many people. And there was like 25 of us in one room. Mm-hmm. And, like, it wasn't a big room. Like, it was pretty small. <laughs> and we were so loud. <laughs> we were so, so loud. I mean, you thought you'd have a conversation with the person, like, two people down from you. But it was so loud you could literally only talk to the person next to you. <laughs> but there was so much laughter. At one point, I just remember sitting there in my seat and not saying anything. And just kind of staring And I remember I made eye contact with Sam and both of us just started smiling. And it's like, it was one of those, you could just tell how happy we were, we were both. Cause it, at that moment, like our our entire story had just come to life in a matter of three days. Um, So by far one of the most absolutely amazing experiences, like just absolutely above all beyond amazing. And that doesn't even scratch the surface of all the fantastic film memories there are. Like being in an airport at two in the morning to film concourse or like getting to stop filming because you see a plane so they can't film on Redshift or just getting to watch the sunset when you're filming outside during system air. For the, like, one scene that's outside in System Air. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> Gotta remember that. That was a <laughs> shining bright moment. Oh, yes. Like, was... those are just some phenomenal experiences that I will never forget. Or, like, just friend experiences. Like, late nights playing Commander. Like, with magic cards. Or staying up having a dance party and trying to do homework with my roommates which ended up in all of us just dying of laughter 90% of the time to my longtime roommate Amanda Fielding and I our freshman year lofting our beds six feet in the air (laughs) and every night the two of us just die laughing before either one of us fell asleep because we'd stay up talking about what had happened that day. Like, those are experiences you can't put a price on and you can't put anything on. Like, late night runs to the hub because you wanted a bag of chips and a pop. Or being known as the girl who runs around campus in shorts and rain boots during the middle of winter when there is snow on the ground. (laughs) Because that's normal in the state of Minnesota, but not in the state of Indiana, I guess? Yeah, that doesn't really make sense to me either. Um, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a strange person, but it's okay. <laughs> it's things fair, like that. Fair. Or the amount of times I had dance parties and then people would laugh at me. And then join me in the dance party. <laughs> it's things like that. Those are yeah. what made HU amazing. And I couldn't be happier about where I have been. Just sad I don't get to have any more of those at HU, but I know I'll still have them with the people and the friends that I've made at HU. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. All right, so before we like end things off, is there anything you just want to say, get off your chest, or anything on your mind? I would say to all the underclassmen, Don't take anything for granted. I feel like that's getting said a lot right now, especially by a lot of seniors of 2020. But it's a real fact. Don't take for granted those late night runs to get a sandwich or a pint of ice cream. Don't take for granted your buddy playing their music too loud in their room (laughs) and having a dance party. Don't take for granted the phone calls or the FaceTimes that 
are your friends saying, hey, come here, like, go for those things. If it's, and maybe this is wrong of me to say, but if it's between I have to finish writing this paper for an 8 a.m. class or I have a buddy who really needs to sit down and talk right now, talk to your buddy. Because that paper, you'll get it done. That time with your friend, like physically being there with your friend, don't take those for granted. For sure. Definitely. And if you're an athlete, don't take for granted every single time you get to step on a court or step on the track or the field or the course. You don't know when your last time's going to be. Mm -hmm. Well said. All right. Well, thank you, Smiley, for coming on uh, this episode of Senior Reflections. 